I want to go over today a research study, or really it's a peer-reviewed article of two research studies about how you can be metabolically healthy, meaning your body's functioning great internally, but be in a larger body. Now, I know this can be a little bit of a controversial topic because people like to associate with being in a larger body as unhealthy and being in a smaller body as healthy, but that's not always true, right? And so these two research studies actually demonstrate that and show that that's not the case based on all of the markers that they I looked into. So I'm actually going to read a little bit from my phone because I just want to make sure I'm doing this justice. And I think some of these things, it's important that I actually read to you verbatim so that you understand what these research studies actually found. So first of all, the name of this study is called Fitness and Fatness. Not all obese people have the same prognosis. And I want to read to you the summary of this whole literature review, right? People can be obese, but metabolically healthy and fit with no greater risk of developing or dying from cardiovascular disease or cancer than normal weight people. So <laughs> the first study that they look into is actually done by a guy named Dr. Ortega, um, who's from Spain, okay? And so what he did is he actually studied people from 1979 all the way up to 2003. And what he did is he did a physical examination of these individuals using a treadmill test to accept to assess their cardiorespiratory fitness and measurements of height, weight, waist circumference, and their percentage of body fat. And how he measured percentage of body fat was by doing the water displacement, which is actually one of the most accurate ways to do that, okay? He also took their blood, blood pressure, cholesterol, and fasting glucose measures fasting glucose levels to see, you know, what their health was to begin with. Okay. And so what Dr. Ortega and his colleagues found was this. And again, I'm going to read this to you verbatim now. Ready? 46% of the obese participants were metabolically healthy. After adjusting for several confounding factors, including fitness, the metabolically healthy but obese people had a 38% lower risk of death from any cause than their metabolically unhealthy obese peers. So you hear that? So there are individuals who are in a larger body that are still metabolically healthy. And those individuals who are metabolically healthy, which was 46% of them, actually have a lower risk of death compared to other individuals, okay? So they said the risk of developing or dying from cardiovascular disease or cancer was reduced by between 30 to 50% for the metabolically healthy but obese people. You hear that? So I just want to share this with you because I think it's important that you understand that you can't assume because of someone's weight or size or whatever that they are healthy or unhealthy. We've got to break this connection that anybody who's in a larger body is unhealthy and anybody who's thin is healthy. That that's not always true and this study goes to show that. So I do still want to go into the other study that they review here, right? Um, and the other study was actually done in Sweden, and it was using data from over 64,000 patients who had been um, admitted for some sort of cardiovascular disease, okay? And so what they actually found here, and give me a second while I scroll, okay. So what they found, and again, I'm going to read this to you verbatim, it says, we found that patients who were underweight with a body mass index of less than 18.5 had the greatest risk of dying. So those people who already had cardiovascular disease, remember we have to factor that in, 64,000 people who are already on this registry for angioplasty, et cetera, which would be cardiovascular vascular disease, right? Eight, the people of, those, of that category, the people who had a BMI of 18.5 or less had the greatest risk of dying. Their risk was double that of the normal weight patients who had a BMI of 21 to 23.5 the group with the lowest risk of dying of cardiovascular disease were the people with a BMI of 26.5 to 28. Now, I know we don't talk a lot about BMI here at the Common Clinic because it's really not our favorite measure of someone's uh, actual picture of what's going on in their body, but if you are looking at BMI charts, 26 to 20, 26.5 to 28 is considered overweight. These people had the lowest risk of dying when it comes to cardiovascular disease. So we, again, I wanted to share this with you so that we change our perceptions. You can't just look at someone and assume that they're healthy or unhealthy. Um, and then I'll just continue to read the last little part here. It says, the researchers found that the relationship between BMI and mortality was U-shaped. Those with the lowest risk of death were overweight and obese patients with BMIs ranging from 26.5 to 35. 
I'm gonna read that to you one more time. Those with the lowest risk of dying <laughs> were overweight and obese patients with BMIs ranging from 26.5 to 35. The highest risk was found among those with overweight and then the, or sorry, <laughs> the highest risk was found among underweight individuals and then morbidly obese, which is BMI above 40, okay? So again, U-shaped, the people with BMIs of 26.5 to 35 had the lowest risk of dying of cardiovascular disease. So now, I don't want you to take this as me saying that, oh, you should just gain a bunch of weight because a lot of people, when I talk about stuff like this, are like, oh, you're promoting obesity. That's not the point here. What we're trying to educate on is, again, getting rid of these uh, stereotypes that someone in a larger body must be unhealthy or must be doing X, Y, and Z, and they should change this, et cetera. And then on the flip side, that someone who is in a smaller body is automatically healthy. We have to change these perceptions. And this study here, or these two studies, I should say, really demonstrate that. So all of that to say, it's so important to look into the bigger picture, what someone's fitness level is, how they're nourishing their body, et cetera, which is what we try to do here at the Calm Clinic. We want to get the whole picture and look at you from the inside out and measure health from the inside.